Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Tonight, a prophetic segment of the broadcast, a very powerful segment indeed. And what I'm about to be sharing with you here in a few moments is going to shock you without a doubt. It's definitely going to lay some things that have happened here with this latest earthquake in Italy. I think it's about to set a time frame and a timeline that we are looking at of actually the return of the Messiah in modern times. Before we get started with this broadcast, let me just remind you, we have been having difficulty from what you guys have reported to us on people being able to donate online on this work that we do here. Many of you have sent messages to us that you're not able to access our website online. Uh, we did have professionals look at this. They said that our site has been attacked by definitely very powerful people that want to silence us, and they've been trying to stop us from being able to, to, to receive donations where you have been such a big part in this. Uh, one thing that we're doing, of course, you can still try on IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. Both websites are in the description, but also a direct link that goes directly to our donations on PayPal. We are including that direct link in here. Um, it's a very simple link, something you can just copy and paste and bypass the website altogether. We thank you for your help, and it is definitely needed. God bless you and thank you. Let's get right into this. Again, as I said, a very powerful message, and this is on the prophetic side of things like this here. We will continue to pr bring biblical prophetic insight on things that do happen from time to time, especially when we see that it is obvious that biblical things are happening as a result of things that are taking place in the news. But of our, as, far, as far as our special teachings, we have set up the channel now, Danun Institute, uh, that is on YouTube as well, where you can watch that. And as well, our new Periscope, where you can follow Periscope live breaking news feeds uh, just by clicking on our Twitter channel. It will always send you messages that we are running live on a special broadcast that could be happening right then and there. And that's under, if you and check where you're at now, because many have subscribed in other areas because of channels that were set up for us. Uh, there is one active under my name, but it's not me. Uh, we are Israeli News Live at Stephen Denoon. Denoon is my name that I write books under. Uh, it's our, my pen name, Stephen Denoon being my real name. But if there, the other website or the other um, the other Twitter accounts uh, are basically inactive, but this is the active one. There is another one though, like I said, that carries my name that's active, but I never set it up. I don't know who has that. Uh, but anyway, if you look at it again, Israeli News Live uh, at Stephen Denoon, D-E-N-O-O-N. -O -O that's where we're active at. That's where you can follow us, and that's where you get the live Periscope breaking news as well. Let's get right into this. This is just kind of a little bit of a video footage of the latest 6.6 .6 earthquake. This morning, RT and Sputnik News were saying that this was a 7.1 earthquake, and by the looks of it, I would think 7.1. This church here, one of the older churches there uh, in Italy there, totally destroyed as many of the houses were as well. I mean, it is a devastation. And as the uh, mayor was saying, he had been to hell when he went to this place here. He said, I saw hell, says Marco Rinaldi, uh, when he actually visited uh, the, the scene here. As you can see, the walls crumbling down under the shaking of the earth there. And I know a lot of times when people see earthquakes, yes, there's earthquakes all over the earth, and people would say, you know, how, what does that have to do with judgment? Why would you call this judgment? Well, you know, unfortunately, what we see when we look at things like this, I don't, I don't always see biblical prophecies as something necessarily that is a good thing. In other words, there are lives that are lost. Uh, but a lot of times I think what it is is the prophets saw things and they wrote those things that they saw that would happen. Just like we see in the case of Syria and even Mosul. Mosul has been pop prophecies being fulfilled week after week, month after month, and year after year in modern times. And we're going to be looking at some of this tonight as I share uh, with you a special broadcast that we've put together here for you on the prophetic things that are happening. I call it Adam falling under judgment. 
And yes, we like I said, we realize too, California, South America, Indonesia, Asia, everywhere there is earthquakes happening in the world today at an unprecedented uh, rate. But what is happening in Rome, I think, is very interesting, especially in light of things that have been said. And that's where I start to see the prophecy dots starting to connect. And I'm going to share with you things about Rome in particular, why there's prophecies that, are, that relate specifically to them, and as well remind you of those about Syria that are happening, that have been fulfilled, those that will be fulfilled, and even in Iraq prophecies as well. So we can kind of see what's going on in line of this latest earthquake here that struck early this morning inside of Italy there. Let's get right into this right now here. Taking, if you have a Bible and you do want to follow along, go to Psalm 30, 137, verse 1. Very famous scripture. Uh, in fact, and uh, when we hear this, it th makes me think of the uh, song, and I don't know if I actually still have that on or not. I'll see over here on this other computer over here beside me. Uh, the rivers of Babylon. Um, the one thing, well, that computer's powered down, but the famous song that we've heard so much about by the rivers of Babylon, there where we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Now, this is when Israel goes into captivity, into, into Babylon, uh, the first time before the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. And of course, this is what Jeremiah prophesied of. And they remember Zion, Zion being Mount Zion there, the mountain there where basically the old city is sitting on top of this mountain. It says, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. But I want to focus on the, uh, mainly the scriptures you see in yellow here. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us a, a, a mirth, saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. Now that, you know, biblical prophecy is often repeated in history as well. How many Holocaust films have we seen where they show in there like Schindler's List and, and, uh, and, and even another one there, um, uh, the Uprising, we see in the, the movie The Uprising as well, the, the German sol soldiers saying to the Jews, play us, give me a little of a song, and they make them play the violins before the people are going to their deaths or to the gas chambers and things of this nature here, right? This, uh, yes, we're seeing prophecy repeated itself. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. All right, if you drop down to verse 7, Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even the foundation thereof, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. Now that goes into verse 8. But see, this is speaking about something together, altogether different here. When we're talking about this dispersion here in, in uh, 137th Psalm, verse 7, Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom, we can identify Edom by the 70 AD destruction of Jerusalem because Obadiah clearly tells us that it was Edom that destroyed it. And of course, we know that Titus, the Roman general, is the one that led that campaign to destroy the city and the sanctuary thereof, even according to Daniel's prophecy in chapter 9, which we'll look at here in just a moment. Uh, but they say here, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, raise it, raise it. In other words, destroy it to the ground, even the foundation thereof, which, by the way, again, speaks of 70 AD. See, they raised it all the way down to the foundation, but you notice the Temple Mount was never destroyed. That's exactly what it's talking about, even to the foundation thereof. Right down. They destroyed everything of the temple itself all the way down to the foundation itself. O daughter of Babylon who art to be destroyed. See, that's how we know about the mystery Babylon that's written in the book of Revelation. We know who the mystery Babylon is. It's the children of Esau, the children of Edom. Edom, by the way, was a name given to Esau as well. Uh, it speaks, speaks about this in the book of Genesis. That's how we know that Esau, his descendants here coming on down called Edom. Uh, they call him Adam because he was red-haired, a uh, hairy man, but, but uh, had re very red hair. It said, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall be the reward of thee as thou hast served us. So see, there is a prophecy clearly coming to those of Esau uh, for what they have done to the Jewish people over time. Now, as we said there, remember, they would sit there and they would say, for uh, 
for, for, their, for there they, they carried us away captive and required of us a song. And this here being in the movie, The Pianist here, and the German soldier. Now this particular German soldier happened to show kindness uh, to this particular Jewish man here, uh, who, who actually the man he's portraying of the true story here. But it's, again, it's another, it's another um, uh, uh, example of what we're talking about here when they said, you know, carried us away captive and required of us a song. And that's exactly what he does here in this particular film here. He plays for the German, but in his case, it won him favor with the German and he brought him food until the end of the Holocaust there, uh, trying to keep him safe and kept him hidden in the attic there. So I just thought it was very interesting to put this particular part inside of here so you could actually see that there. So anyway, moving on over to the next one here, uh, another part of the verse there, verse 7, Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Psalm 137, verse 7. I put here the very the picture we took ourselves right there. Me and my wife were taking pictures there of the Ark of Titus. And this is the, the carving that was placed in there as a memorial uh, that Titus had conquered uh, Jerusalem and the temple itself. You know, when they say that the Temple Mount, there was never a temple, it was never a Jewish place. You know, Rome itself has the very Ark of Titus showing the seven candle menorah there, them carrying it back, the shoe bread, the, 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 the trumpets that were used in the temple service all being carried all the way back to, to, to Rome, uh, Italy. Uh, and supposedly these are actually in the catacombs of the Vatican now. Now, of course, we know the Vatican wasn't there at the time. Uh, this was before that particular period, but they were hidden there in Jerusalem, excuse me, in Rome. They were there in the ancient Babylonian city there. And uh, so, or, or Roman city, we should call it there, but it becomes a modern day Babylon, uh, if you ask me. And that's what I think is interesting when he mentions in verse 8 of Psalm 137, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed? See, he's letting you know that she's going to be destroyed, that daughter of Babylon, showing that it's not the Babylon that was over in the Middle East there, uh, in the ancient Assyrian Empire. It's not that Babylon that's going to be destroyed, but it's the daughter of Babylon. And again, they identify that as Adam's children. And look what we actually see when we saw the earthquake happening uh, in Italy there. And you might think, well, that's not Rome. Rome would be the Babylon. But you know, there's actually a prophecy that says that God will destroy their cities as well. This just being one, and it's just an example. Uh, only a, This is only a beginning of what will come in the very near future. I mean, the entire earth is coming to judgment. It's, it's no difference as we see also, uh, I believe in Jeremiah, I believe I wanna say it's in, in the book of Jeremiah, the 51st or 50th chapter, I forget which one right off the top of my head there, where many people believe it's America that falls under judgment as Babylon as well. And America is Babylon by extension to Rome because she is the Roman soldiers fighting the battles. And yes, I do believe that God will bring judgment upon the nation. And again, as I've stated so many times, there's so many innocent people that are caught up in the midst of these judgments. But you have to remember that both the good, both the innocent and the guilty suffered during the times of the judgment when God was bringing judgment by, by the mouth of Jeremiah uh, on the children of Israel because of their sins, you know? So the, the, those that were not participating in those evils went into captivity just as well, just like it it was down in Egypt uh, as well. Both the righteous and unrighteous have suffered together. And though there's many people in America that are good godly people, but yet because the sins of the government of America that have brought death and destruction to the entire world, I don't see how God will be able to let it go by and not bring judgment upon the land. You know, so, you know, this is where we just trust God that he will protect those that are innocent, that are, that their lives that, that are in the middle of this. And so I, I, when I bring these things out to you, I bring it out. It's, it's a difficult thing to say, but I just have to tell you what I see written, you know, and we go, we just go from there. Moving on right here in Obadiah chapter one, verse six, this is kind of connect the dots for you here. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? That's verse six. 
6 right there, God is showing you who Esau is and how Esau has traveled down through time. We drop down to verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover you and shall uh, and, 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 and thou shalt be cut off forever. Now, if you think about it, Esau never really did evil to Jacob in the life here on this earth. All right. So because when they come back, we see in the biblical account in Genesis, he come back like he was going to kill him. But then he receives him. And he, basically, I think Jacob pays him off. But it goes down through the descendants is what we see here. If you go into verse 11, In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast as one of them. So we realize here by verse 11 that in this case here, Adam is not, or Esau here, is not being uh, related to from time past, but into a future time from his physical life here on earth on earth and now at the point where Jerusalem uh, casting lots upon Jerusalem even thou was us one of them you know it's kind of interesting casting the lots upon Jerusalem do you know that actually speaks of Yeshua himself when they cast lots for his own garment and it was who did, did that the Roman soldiers cast lots for the very garments of Yeshua and that's what he's speaking of right there all right but it goes on but thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother and the day that he became a stranger neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress all right and that's how we know right there when it's speaking about because he's not speaking about the house of Israel who's already been 780 years into in dispersion already from the first dispersion this is the house of Judah only that he's speaking about so it has to be 70 AD thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity yea thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity or have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity Okay, remember the substance? All right, here's your substance. Right there. There's your substance. They laid hands. Who is this? The Romans laid hands on the substance. This isn't the Syrians. That's the Romans. All right? So you can take Chuck Missler and these wonderful, uh, you know, I have no, no evil to say of them, but you still take Chuck will tell you that the Syrian army was the main one that, that laid the siege to, to Jerusalem. Okay, I agree with that. But it's the Romans that carried it all back to their place there. All right. Now keep in mind the day of their calamity. Don't forget that word. We're going to run across that again. And as you see in the photo here on your screen here, this is Jerusalem being laid. Or, or they're, they're actually on top of the altar there where they burn the sacrifices at. And you can actually see the menorah being carried away right there as well. Um, you know, that's what's going on there. Now let's drop over to Ezekiel's prophecy and notice the array of different prophecies from the from the Tanakh the Jewish Bible there of all these things that are happening here Ezekiel 35 to son of man set thy face against Mount Seir by the way Mount Seir was the mountain where Edom or Esau they were actually living at so they're referred to by by four different names Esau Edom being what he was called as Edom in Genesis uh, Edomia which is actually something you find more often in the Greek language the name used for Edom or Esau is Edomia and then Mount Seir Sierra, Mount Sierra being the, the mountain where they were actually living on down there, uh, closer to southern Israel, down by a lot over on the side of Jordan, modern day Jordan and Syria, uh, excuse me, uh, Saudi Arabia there and no, that area there. But anyway, it says, And say unto to, to it, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste. Notice that. Thy cities waste. And thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Now, by the way, Ezekiel is long after David and Solomon warred against uh, uh, Mount uh, Seir down in his country. This is long after that. Okay, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. Here it is. In the time of their calamity, what did you have over here? Obadiah. He says right here, Yea, thou shouldst not have looked on the day of their affliction, the day of their calamity. That's 70 A.D. Now see, what does God accuse 
Adam of of this one here, Mount Seir, Esau's children, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, which is 70 AD. Notice the next one though, in the time that their iniquity had an end. That's modern days. That's the day you're living in now. This is where the prophecy, Israel is in her homeland. I'm not talking about the, 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 the crookedness of some certain families that got into power in Israel back, back before 1948 when Rome was trying to get in certain families that they had loyal to the Catholic Church in order to create a state there. You know, God knew that there was a state going to be created. Okay, I realize that. I realize I am not for the political Zionism. But one thing I am for is for the Jewish people that return to their homeland because they want to see Mashiach. Their eyes will come open in that land. God swore that he would take them back to Mount Zion. That's just a prophecy, friends. I can't get around that one there. Neither can you. All right, so they are back in their land. And God says right here through the prophet Ezekiel that, they, that Esau's children... See, Mount Seir, they have had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by force of the sword in the time of their calamity, which was 70 AD, and the time that their iniquity have an end. How do we know when that iniquity has an end? Well, look at Daniel 70 weeks when you read about that from ch chapter 9, verse 24 on down. Notice what it says, though. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish what? The transgression. What transgression? where they transgress the law of God. All right? To make an end of sins and to make what? Reconciliation for iniquity. Well, what do you know? That's what he says right here, the time that their iniquity had an end. The only way the iniquity can come to an end is when there's reconciliation made for the iniquity. All right? And bring in everlasting righteousness and seal up the vision and prophecy and anoint the most holy. What do you know? Interesting too. Let me share with you verse. Go down to verse 9, uh, 26. And there, and, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Well, the Messiah's already come. And he's cut off. Right? But notice this here. I, I did this intentionally. The people underlined of the prince that shall come. So Yeshua was the Mashiach. He was the anointed prince. That's what it says about him in Hebrew, that the Messiah, it says the Mashiach would be cut off. Okay? But when he gets down here, then it speaks about a prince that shall come. Okay? And that prince that shall come is of the people that destroyed the, the city and the sanctuary. Well, what do you know? The prince that shall come, or the Antichrist... Some might say he's a false prophet. All right, I, I'm not going to you know, split hairs with you on it. It's okay, whatever you want to look at it to be. But according to Daniel's prophecy, there's a coming prince, but he's not an anointed prince. He's just a prince. He's an antichrist. He is a type of Christ, but he's not the real deal. And he is of the people that destroyed the city and the sanctuary. Well, we just got through reading who did that. That was Esau's descendants over here. And, uh, and, and Esau's descendants are the ones that destroyed it, and according to Obadiah's prophecy, Obadiah uh, clearly says right here that Esau stood there and allowed everything to happen. And God said, you shouldn't have stood there on the day of their calamity. You shouldn't have been part of that. All right? So Obadiah identifies Esau's descendants as doing that, and according to right here in Daniel, uh, excuse me, not, I'm wrong, wrong page, sorry. According to Daniel 70 weeks here down here in Daniel 9, 26, the prince that shall come comes out of the people that destroyed the city and the sanctuary. And we know that to be Titus the Roman general because they put a nice big old plaque there for us in Italy so that we can see who's the one that actually did it. There's your evidence. And that ark was built while Titus was still alive. Imagine that. So he had a chance to refuse it, right? Let's move on down. Joel's prophecy. Now Joel takes a stab at this here. Joel chapter 3 verse 19. Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah. Egypt shall be desolate. Man, something's about to come. I mean, Egypt's already gotten one good whack here not long ago. Um, 
with all the uh, things going on there. You know, Libya, the, ups the, 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 the you know, the Benghazi that created the uh, Arab Spring. And, but you know, it's not over with yet. Egypt is going to be desolate as well before it's over with. For the violence against the children of Judah. Hmm. And see, notice this. Egypt should be a desolation and Adam should be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever in Jerusalem from generation to generation. That's interesting. Adam shall be a desolate wilderness. Let's continue on. Look at this. Prophecies. Let me, let me just, I want to back up and show you something here before we, before we get too much further. I'm going to look at two different prophecies that I've been sharing with you here on Israeli News Live here ever since all this Middle East conflict really got rolling on. All right. This here is prophecies of Syria that have already been fulfilled. Now, I'm not talking about Isaiah 17 where it says Damascus shall be a ruinous heap. Let's look at Micah chapter 7. In that day, that, that thy walls are to be built, and that day shall the decree be far removed. And that day also shall come even to thee from Assyria, and from the fortified cities, and from the fortress, even to the river, and from the sea, and to the sea, and from the mountain to mountain. That's talking about an invasion on Israel. All right? But, watch what he says here in verse 13. Not, notwithstanding, though, in other words, before that happens, watch what happens. The land shall be desolate. What land? Not Israel. Assyria. Now, by the way, Assyria covers all of modern-day Syria and western Iraq. That was a Syrian, a Syrian empire. And it says, Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. A civil war. And what did the United States do when they came in there? Well, first off, they armed ISIS. ISIS was part of the Iraqi uh, military that they turned into a bunch of bandits and thugs. They also, the U.S. government took and they gathered together uh, some disgruntled uh, Sunnis there in Syria and they armed them and called them the moderate rebels. And they turned them against President Bashar al-Assad to try to bring him down. See? See? So what does it say? Notwithstanding. In other words, even though there's going to be an attack on Israel from all sides, from the mountains, which is on the Jordan River side, from the sea, which is out of the Mediterranean, from every coast, every direction, they're going to come against Israel. But before that happens, notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. God's giving you timetables of what to look for. And yes, all these militaries are getting over there in the Middle East. I've even seen some people saying that they're wondering if President Putin is not working in concert with the United States in order to bring about all this desolation. You know, I don't know. One thing I do know that, I, that seems odd to me is that he continually allows the Turkish government to continue to move inside of Syria. And yet he's supposed to be there protecting Bashar al-Assad when Bashar al-Assad says that Turkey's presence there is an invasion. I mean, something's not right, friends. Something is majorly wrong in this pictures here. Let's look at this one here, Mosul. This picture here, this, this just came out. Look at these four women fleeing Mosul. Yeah, there's a few men in there as well. Look at them. Nahum, chapter 2, verse 8. But Nineveh is old like a pool of water, yet they shall flee away. Nineveh is right smack dab in the middle of Mosul. And by the way, they destroyed that Nineveh town, the ancient city there. Right? They shall, uh, excuse me, stand, stand, shall they cry, but none shall look back. Take ye the spoil of silver, take the spoil of gold. There is none... Uh, none end of this store of glory out of the pleasant furniture. Oh yeah, ISIS, when they were there, they took all that out and sold it on the black market. And the next thing you know, it ended up in England and other places like that. All the stolen furniture from this place. And the gold and the silver and all the U.S. dollars that were left over there inside of the uh, banks there. They got all that too. Millions of U.S. dollars. She is empty and void and waste and the heart melteth, and the knees smite together, and much pain in all loins, and the faces of them all gathered blackness. And when you look at these people here, the distress that these women are under as they flee this city, where do they go to now? What do they do now? You know, like I said, you know, 
my heart goes out for people like this. But prophecy is prophecy, and it's happening anyway. All right, so if it's happening there, you don't think it's not going to come to, to, to Italy as well? So no, this is not just Rome. It's wherever these children of Esau are at. Esau never stopped his attack against Israel. Never has. Even in the Holocaust, Pope Pius XII was very much orchestrating behind the Holocaust itself. Don't think he wasn't. Rome had a heavy hand in that. Amos 1.11, Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Adam and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother and the sword, with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. Remember Ezekiel 35 that I just shared with you, where he said that he, he, he used the sword against them, from the time of their calamity, even when their iniquity had an end, do you know that the third antifada right here that's been happening in the modern days, the antifada that's going on right now, the favorite use of death of the Palestinian people against the Jews is by the sword, by the knife? Tell me it's not prophetic. And the sad thing is the Palestinian people are duped in it by, by a bunch of, you know, Catholic conspirators in there. You know, Israel, it should be one state, and it should be to where the, both Palestinian and, and, and the Israeli people can live side by side in peace, and they should be able to do so and, they, and have equality between them. But they're not going to have it. You know why? Because just like Rome is doing the same thing in Israel that John Stockwell spoke about, uh, former director of the CIA's uh, director of operations says about the United States CIA. They go about toppling de democratic governments all over the world, but the way they do it is they create a strife. They get two radical groups and cause them to clash against each other. Same thing going on in Israel. Same thing. You see, the Palestinians are just falling victim to those things like Cardinal Jean-Louis Thoreau when he goes in there and says, there shall be no peace in Jerusalem until all these areas are given over to the Vatican. Hmm. Sounds like it, doesn't it? And by the sword, no less. Just like the scripture says. Malachi, we're getting close to the end here. Malachi chapter 1, verse 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet you say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountain and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Where, whereas Edom saith, we, now watch this here, Edom says, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. And he lays his mountains and heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. But Edom says, we're impoverished. In other words, we don't have a lot of money in our country, but we're gonna, but we're gonna rebuild it. We'll build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness, the people against the Lord whom hath indignation forever. And why would God do that? Because they never stopped killing the children of Israel. You know, I mean, God loves all people, but, you know, sin is sin. And it doesn't matter whether it's the Jews or whether it's the Americans, the Europeans, the Russians, whoever it is. If we don't love one another, God will bring judgment. I mean, it's, it's, the, the judgment is inevitable. He is long-suffering, willing, not willing that any should perish. But when you intentionally just keep on, like in the case of the Jewish people, they were just targeted. You know, Rome has targeted them ever since the Romans brought them down in 70 AD and then the, in 325 at Nicaea Council, they sent back in there and they killed off all the early Christians that were Jews. They were actually, had, had became Christians and they would be here today had they not been murdered by, by the early uh, Roman uh, Roman state religion that was put together in 325 AD when they sent back in there to northern Africa and killed them all off. Sure, that's what happened. You'd have a lot of Jewish believers today. There'd be even more Jewish converts today to believe that Yeshua was Messiah. But they wanted to suppress all that. They wanted to stop because they, they believed, you know, 
I believe they were closer to the Word of God than what you have from Rome by far. And even Alberto Rivera says that. He says that the church went in there and they wanted to suppress the truth. That was his own word, suppress the truth, because those early Jews knew that true word that Yeshua brought. Instead of the butchered up part that Rome decided to give to us. All right. So he says, whereas Adam saith, we are impoverished, but we, we will return and build the desolate places. All right, let's see what happens here. Watch this here. Malachi 1.3, and I hated Esau and laid his mountain and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. So up in the mountains of Rome where Esau is at now, according to Daniel chapter 9, remember Daniel said that the, the, the that prince that shall come is of the people that destroyed the temple and the sanctuary. So we know that's the Romans of today. That doesn't mean that everybody in Rome is bad neither, guys. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. It's a spirit that I'm talking about. It's a spirit of Antichrist. It's a spirit of Esau upon people that are willing to do the things that they do. But in that locale, in the mountains of Rome, the mountains and his heritage waste. What is his heritage? They have been saying on the news that all the ancient old artifact buildings have been destroyed by this earthquake. But here's what really got me. Remember when Adam says here, the same chapter there in Malachi, Adam saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Well, what does it say right here on the head of this Euro News? We will rebuild everything, says Renzi, tells it, tells it in Italy. Let's take a look at this again. Malachi chapter 1, verse 4. Again, this, what this guy says today, Renzi, he told reporters, he's the mayor of Italy. He quoted words out of his own mouth that were laying prophetically in the Bible for this man to say it. Malachi 1, 4 says, Whereas Adam saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Here's the article, Euro News, October 30th, 2016, came out today, Historica Basilica of St. Benedict is destroyed. Italy's prime minister is promising that the homes, churches, and properties destroyed in a string of earthquake over the past two months will be rebuilt. Matteo Renzi made the pledge just hours after another powerful quake hit the center of the country. Now that's normal. Everybody says they're going to rebuild, right? Okay, I understand that, but watch the way he says it. We will rebuild everything, the houses, the churches, and the businesses. Renzi told reporters, everything that needs to be done to be rebuilt, these areas will be done. Italy is living through difficult times, Renzi added. But he promised a massive reconstruction effort in the years ahead, regardless of any possible objections from the EU over the eventual cost. In other words, we are impoverished, but we're going to rebuild it anyway. there may be enough time for them to rebuild it because the prophecy says, thus saith the Lord host, they shall build, but I will throw it down. Jeremiah alludes to one of the witnesses. Let's look at how these things are going to happen. In Jeremiah chapter 49, 17, also Edom shall be a desolation, even one that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at the plagues thereof. The plagues? You remember over in Revelation chapter 11? Or how about better yet when God says in Revelation 18, 4, Come out of her, my people, and be ye not partakers of her plagues. Yeah. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. Come out of her, my people. Who is that? Mystery Babylon, Adam, Rome. And be ye not partakers of her plagues. All right? As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of the Jordan against the habitation of the strong. But I will suddenly make him run away from her. That's those Roman soldiers. He's talking about when they come through the desolated land of Syria, when they come up against Israel, they're going to come up, but suddenly he will make her run away. Hmm. Who is a, watch this. And who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? 
for who is like me and who will appoint me the time and who is that shepherd that I will stand before me. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord. He that hath taken against Adam and his purpose, that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Timon, surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. He's alluding to one of your two witnesses. Notice here in Micah 7.14, another allu alluding uh, passage by Micah. Feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thine heritage. Oh, there's that shepherd which dwell solitarily in the wood in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old. Feed on what? The Word of God. That's that Word of God, the ancient past being restored. According to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt will I show unto him marvelous things. The nations shall see and be confounded at all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. You want to talk about a rocking of the earth when that man comes forth with his staff there? It's coming, friends. It's coming. Obadiah 1.21, And Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Mount Zion, there in Jerusalem, where the Pope of Rome, in 2014, they held a communion service there in accordance to what Obadiah's prophecy was in verse 16, where he says, They shall drink upon my holy mountain. And they shall continue to drink down all the nations and they will swallow down, right? Remember, that? I'm just paraphrasing that verse right there. That's in the masculine plural, the first part of the verse. The Pope of Rome came with only men and they drank upon God's holy mountain, Mount Zion. They made Mount Zion into Mount Esau. But God said he's going to send saviors, or the word there could be translated as deliverers, there to Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. Your two witnesses of Revelation 11 are going to come up on Mount Zion, and that is where the ministry shall begin, at least from what I can tell. Maybe not, maybe not, but it looks like perhaps so. I hope that this has been a blessing to you, although it is not the easy thing to say because many people will not like what I've said today. And understand, though I, the things that I say are difficult, judgment is happening all over the world. Somewhere God's got to bring it to a conclusion. And whatsoever a man reaps, that shall a man sow. But the thing is, as we live in an hour or two to where we have time to repent and ask God to forgive us, if there's someone we sinned against, ask the person you sinned against to forgive you. Make restitution, make reconciliation, whatever you can do to make those things right. Make it right while you have the opportunity. We're living in a very late hour, an hour where judgment is about to just reek across the entire earth. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment of our broadcast this evening. Again, if God lays it upon your heart to help contribute to the work that we're doing here, in the description of this video, you can open up the description there, just underneath the video there, right down below there on the screen there. Look there, click on that description, the box will open up. We placed it in easier for you just to be able to donate directly uh, if you're not able to get IsraeliNewsLive.org opened up. We thank you for your love and your kindness in this work, especially in a late hour that we're living in where many people are no doubt stressed about the times that we're living in. And we thank you for all that you're doing for us as well as we try to help you in this closing hours. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.